Hi there and welcome to this devotional video from Open Door Church Sunbury. Uh, we are looking through the book of Ephesians at the moment and we've arrived at chapter 5 and now verse 17 in which we find another therefore. And the preceding verses have been kind of a sequence of therefores, pieces of advice and counsel from the Apostle Paul because of the fact that we are intended to live up to our calling and not live down to our past, because we are not just to follow the crowd and live as the rest of humanity lives, because we're to live in light and not in darkness, because the days are evil and great care is needed to navigate them. And Paul has been providing some really useful and valuable advice to, to Christians I think they apply, it applies morally to, to most people in the light of those things. And in verse 7 he says, Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms and hymns and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music to, your heart, to the Lord in your heart always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, uh, I don't know about you, I, I like a glass of this stuff as much as the next person. Uh, I enjoy it. It tastes good. It makes me feel good. But there are limits. And the exhortation to avoid drunkenness and, and unrestraint and, and drinking to excess is not a religious um, exhortation per se. It was a common moral uh, and ethical piece of advice in the ancient world. The Greeks in particular <coughs> uh, set high standard on logic and reason and on the mind and so anything that impairs the mind and impairs the judgment was a negative. Isocrates the Greek orator wrote, when the mind is impaired by wine it is like chariots which have lost their drivers. I love that illustration. You can just imagine a chariot that's lost its driver crashing around, just like a drunk person who's completely out of control. And it looks funny, it looks hilarious, until it crashes into you. And that's the thing, isn't it? That it, it might seem funny and it might seem amusing, but it can crash into you because drink, one of the things it does as well as impairing the judgment and thought, it unleashes the tongue. And we saw in previous verses how Paul wrote about the good and the evil that the tongue can do. And those unkind thoughts that, you know, generally we have the common sense and kindness to, to keep to ourselves. When, when we're drunk, when we're out of control, when the wine has taken over, those have a way of tripping out and finding their way out. And in lots of ways, when we lose our self-control, when we lose our self-discipline, it gives opportunity to the devil. And Paul says that's one of the things that we should not do. It also, he says, leads to debauchery. The Greek word asotia there was apparently uh, as often associated with the kind of binge drinking that took place at festivals. Well, hey, some things don't change, do they? <coughs> Chaotic, unrestrained, un damaging behaviour that tends to, to come out, uh, even if just occasionally, when the wine, when the booze takes over and we're losing self-control. It also damages the body. We, we now know wine, alcohol is, is something that your body produces but works very hard to get rid of because it's a poison, it's damaging. And your most vital organs are the ones that are most at risk. Your liver, your kidneys, your heart, your brain are all attacked by the poison of alcohol. Across Europe, alcohol kills 800 people a day, around 10,000 people a year in the UK alone. It costs the NHS around three and a half billion pounds a year. So if you're a UK taxpayer, <coughs> the, the health damage from misuse of alcohol is costing you 115 pounds a year. If, you, if you're an average wage earner and you're paying tax at the standard rate. On the programme 24 hours in A&E, one A&E doctor said, after 11 o'clock on a Saturday night, 
everything is alcohol related. And it's on the increase in the year of the pandemic in England and Wales, alcohol related deaths rose by 20%. It wasn't just the coronavirus that was killing people. It is dangerous. It's damaging. It's literally poison. And it poisons our bodies and it poisons our mind when we misuse it and when we drink too much. And as believers, for us, that's just not an option. And I found the only way really to ensure that you keep that un under, under control, under wraps, is, is to have a limit that you will not go over. And I, um, I take care, pay attention to the, um, the limits that are advised by, by the health advisors for men and for women. Um, and they set limits for the benefit of our health. And I've always found it's not that hard, actually, if you're, you're out with your mates, well, not to pass over that one pint too many. And it generally uh, produces the positive response. Well, that was a cheap round, wasn't it? It's, you know, people don't take offence and it's not difficult. But as in previous, previous verses, Paul isn't just <coughs> anti, he's not here just being against this and up against that and you can't do that and you can't do the other but he pro contrasts it with something positive be filled with the spirit and the the um, you know the double meaning the pun that uh, that is in English isn't there in the Greek it's completely unintentional uh, in the original it doesn't exist be filled with the spirit meaning the spirit of God the Holy Spirit um, the uh, commentator professor Frank, Frank Thielman says, just as a drunken person is full of and controlled by wine, so the believer should be full of and directed by the Spirit. And so Paul encourages the speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and songs from the Spirit. Not necessarily singing one another. He isn't, he's not talking about sort of spiritually serenading each other. La, la, la. That, would, that would be kind of weird. But quoting from, just as Paul did in verse 14 and it does in a number of other places, he quotes from things that were sayings and, and songs and hymns at the time. We tend to remember those words. Many psalms and hymns historically have been instructional. These days there's a bit of a fad and a fashion that, you know, our songs has to be directed to God in the second person. That's not necessarily biblical and hasn't always been the case. It's just... Yeah, it's kind of taken fashion in the church. But we tend to remember the words and we, they come to mind. And actually quoting from the words from a song can help to bring back you know, the intent behind those words, to bring back what we feel and, and uh, what's taking place within us as we sing them and as we hear them. Uh, in the past, hymns have been really useful when you know majority of people were illiterate, they've been really helpful in, in maintaining teaching and, and building people up in that way. They have great value. And so just using the words that others have written, the, the words of the scripture, the words of the Psalms, the words of Paul's letters and the teachings of Jesus and just repeating and reminding ourselves and one another. Huge value. And, and in particular, giving thanks. The giving of thanks, not the... The pursuit of more, whether that be more booze, whether that be more money, whether that be more attention, whether that be more prominence and self-importance, but the giving thanks for what God has given us. And that uh, is an antidote to all kinds of cravings, to be thankful and blessed in what we have already is such a blessing and such a benefit and such a help in resisting and saying no to all manner of things. So may God make us more thankful. May God keep our focus on what he has done for us and what he's given us already. May he enable us to resist that temptation of just the one drink too many or the one cream cake too many or the one whatever it is and to live within the bounds that he has set for our peace and for our health. Amen.